So today I'll be answering your questions about um, GP with special interest or um, rural, being a rural generalist. Uh, this question was asked by one of my uh, subscribers. Shout out to you, Bill Lagat, um, that was asking about um, hearing about obstetricians, gynecologists, anesthesiologists, and at the same time hearing about GP anesthetist. So they just want not show which is which. And I'm sure this is something that a lot of us, um, when we migrate to Australia or as IMGs, it's something that we actually get confused with um, as well. And it's all just in the terminology and I'm going to explain to you what um, all that means. Uh, my name is Anna at uh, Migrant Doctor Mom, and if you're watching me for the very first time, thank you for keep, for joining and um, consider subscribing for more content. And if you're my returning subscriber again, thank you so much for keeping it here. You're the reason why I keep releasing this content. So just quickly into it, if you haven't watched my other videos about being a general practitioner in Australia, by all means, um, look, um, they, will, they will be attached there. You can have a little look. But who is anesthesiologist? You all know. So essentially, when you finish your training, you can get onto a residence program. And if you join obstetrics and gynae, then obviously after a couple of years training, about five, then you can become an obstetrician and gynecologist. But another stream of doing this is if you have finished your fellowship um, of general practitioner practitioners i have done a i've actually done um a video on this and i think as part of remember i said gp training is three years but then you can take an extra year to do a rural or far gp and part of that is to try and get yourself as a um, rural generalist so rural generalist by definition is essentially a general practitioner who can work in general practice, but they do have additional skill set, especially in areas like palliative care, anesthesia, um, uh, obstetrics, and they can provide that much required service, especially in the rural setup to provide that gap uh, in between, obviously in, 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 in consultation and in support by the specialists who are the gynecologists and anesthesiologists and something like that. So you would normally require some extra training on top of just basic uh, general practice training to be a GP or a rural generalist or a GP with additional skills. So for example, GP obstetrics, uh, GP obstetricians are essentially people that have completed their GP training, but they've gone ahead and either gotten a, a, a diploma in um, ob obstetrics offered by the College of Ranskog, which is a Royal Australian College of General, uh, no, of um, Gynecologists and Obstetricians, Ranskog. And some of them actually go ahead and do an advanced diploma. So uh, one that has done a basic uh, diploma can actually deliver like normal deliveries so they can attend um, a delivery like labor they deliver babies and um, obviously in consultation uh, if there is any you know a difficult labor then obviously they consult with obstetrician for support and then you'll find that some actually have gone ahead and, and done an advanced diploma in obstetrics and those ones can even do caesarean section so i find a lot of people IMGs that have ex a lot of experience in their countries, either as senior registrars who haven't completed the training in their countries, or they have completed the training in their countries, they're crossing over, and they're not keen to undergo the rigorous training associated with um, becoming an obstetrician in this country. Um, they, some of them actually opt to do general practice and then link up and become general, um, become GPOs. So GPOs obviously have, especially the advanced ones, have a lot of experience. They can deliver, they can do cesarean section. In that way, you're not losing your skills that you've acquired over time as um, 
uh, uh, a registrar in a country or a specialist in a country, you can still do you what you enjoy, which is doing you know deliveries. You can do uh, cesarean sections. You are actually competent enough to do that. But for you to be able to work in that space, you still need to do a diploma or an advanced diploma with a college, the Ranskog College. The other way, obviously, is doing um, become a rural generalist in the area of anesthesia. Again, you will need to do a diploma in that. And you can also do that, a diploma in emergency department, emergency medicine. And that way you become sort of a GP uh, that can work in emergency department and, you know, do all this sort of set of skills uh, geared towards working in an emergency department. And also in palliative care as well, you can uh, be, uh, you know, a, a, a GP with um, a palliative care uh, specialization. So all those things, you know, the only difference or the difference is obviously the training may be a bit shorter for you to get a diploma compared to you getting um, sort of a master's or a fellowship. So the training is uh, lesser in time, but also the scope of what you can do may be a bit less compared with the uh, someone that ha is a fellow of the Ranskog or a fellow of the various college that you are signing up with. The other thing that is worth mentioning is we do have GPs with special interests. So people that have either work in general practice, but they've decided they just want to do special interest in women health, special interest in skin, special interest in, let's say, hyperbaric and diving, special interest in sexual health, special interest in things like dermatology. So, and I was looking at the college the Royal Australian College, um, they do have so many special interest groups, up to I think about 37 or 27, something as big as that. So, and all those have like respective heads and they, you know, get out content and information, education for those people that have special interest in something. So you do not have to see the, the entire spectrum of general practice. You can actually just create a niche for yourself that you just want to do aging medicine, you want to do um, sports medicine, you want to do uh, dermatology, you want to do women health, you want to do only peds and something like that, which is something that uh, you can obviously create a niche uh, for yourself in that specific area. So in summary, uh, Bill and a few other people that are still confused with a bit of the terminology, this is it. So this is what would entail being either a GP with special interest or being a GP obstetrician, GP anesthetist, GP, you know, palliative care, GPED, and that sort of thing. So we just need to decide what it is that you want to do and to increase your chances or to um, you can actually get yourself into the additional year of GP training, which you call rural general pathway training. The only thing that I need to highlight is a lot of the times, this specific uh, uh, sort of skills are very essential in the rural and remote communities. So if you're hoping to work in those specific areas, again, this is something worth doing because obviously there is more income in this area. There is more income compared to uh, just, you know, um, a sit down GP in a general practice. So. And obviously the other advantage is it gives you an opportunity to work in general practice, but also do a bit of hospital work, which can, you know, create variety and obviously uh, reduce the element of uh, burnout that can happen in doing an eight to five job, five or six days of the week. So that's it, guys. Uh, if we, there's anything that's not clear, do comment down below. And this is important. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for being here.